Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to ATM Spellbound. Uh, so, of course, last episode we had the first episode of the Abyss mod, uh, kind of returning to the Abyss mod after all the changes. Uh, today we are going to be going back into the Abyss uh, for part two. Uh, we're going to be picking back up where we left off. Uh, you know, we were just looking at the pocket dimension. We're going to be picking back up from there, and we're going to be starting into a bit of Somnium and playing with some rings today. Uh, so anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. But let's pop over, back over to the overworld. And I want to address Somnium first, uh, because I don't want to have to be drinking potions. And there actually is quite a few different, like, useful rings within the mod. Um, Ring of Flight might be one. Being able to breathe underwater could be good. Ring of Eagle could be good. Uh, you know, depending on the situation, there might be quite a few different things that uh, we might want to use. So we're gonna we're gonna get into dealing with uh, Somnium because by default, this is not great and the costs are not great. Uh, so if we go down to here to our potions that we can make. Uh, there's some Somnium upgrades, so like usage reduces the consumption of energy when using a ring by 10%, max is 50%. Uh, so we could make this, for example, this takes Roka Horns, uh, some Node Shards, Phantom Souls, Soul Hearts. Uh, there's also uh, Regen, which is one that I would like to make. I'm going to have to go farm some Rokas for that. Uh, slime fusion is stable slimes, which is unstable slimes, which is weird slimes. Uh, so a lot of compression there, but they're fairly easy to um, to farm up. Anti-fear is no fear for 30 minutes. So if you're going to spend a while in the abyss, you might make this, but that's a lot of roca horns uh, for something that only lasts 30 minutes, in my opinion. Unless you set them up in a spawner, and in which case, you know, it might be worth it. Uh, this is for ring cooldowns, uh, increases the strength of a ring. Uh, this won't be for like our pocket dimension, but it'll be for like damage rings. And then we can also make ourselves immortal for 30 seconds. Uh, apples of immortality and regular apples. Uh, but I need to go out and farm if we want to get regen up and going, which I do. Phantom Essence is just Phantom Souls. I've actually got the Roka Horn. Uh, I think all I'm going to be missing is the Weird Slime. Okay. So let's pop over. Luckily, I'm right on top of a slime biome. Uh, so we'll basically be hunting mobs within the slime forest here. But brain walkers and slime spiders should drop the stuff that we're after. Uh, so we're going to be on the lookout for those. Which there's not a whole lot of different mobs. I mean, in spiders, they can spawn like pretty much anywhere. Uh, but for the most part, it's going to be our slime spiders. Uh, we are getting some node shards. These right here are what drops our uh, node shards. So we can grab a few of those as well because uh, we will need those. Okay, it does seem like the slime is only dropping from slime spiders. Does this guy hurt? Nope, no damage from him. All right. Oh, that one's really good too. But yeah, it looks like it's only going to drop from slime spiders. So basically, we just need to be hunting slime spiders and rokas. I'm actually surprised we can't turn slime blocks into those. But it would probably be too easy in that case. Because uh, I think it's meant to be kind of farmed up because it is really powerful. Um, but ideally, we would have four of these potions. We might, we might end up doing a spawner because I have a feeling this is going to take a really long time. And it wouldn't take us but a second. Same with Roka, if we set that up in a spawner. So we might. We might do it, because this is going to be really, really grindy. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that really, really quick. Let's get a Spirit Reanimator, first and foremost. Let's see, we did make a... Uh, we got a Piercing Vengeance Focus, but for this, I'm going to want the Standard Vengeance Focus. Let's get a Vengeance Ring. And let's upgrade it to the standard Vengeance Focus. Now this one, all it does is freeze uh, the spirits. But in this case, we want to just freeze uh, the spirits. Um, and this dimension shouldn't have any pixies, so I shouldn't have to worry about the crash. There's one. Now what we're going to do, let's grab our spectral glasses. 
we'll go ahead and toss these on and let's go ahead and open this up we don't care about that vengeance spirit but I want to grab this spider bring it kind of near the box it helps out oops let me grab this we need this vengeance focus and just hit that and it's kind of like Ghostbusters uh, and we can grab our slime spider in our box of eternal closure we'll go ahead and switch this back now uh, but at this point let's warp home and basically any mob that we capture within a why are you here where did you come from uh, okay I'm gonna have to figure out where he came from I guess but I'm going to leave him there for now. I'm not going to worry about him. But let's go ahead and take our spirit reanimator. We'll just set it down here for right now until I get a better place uh, laid out for that. Of course, you supply this with blood. You can put upgrades in it. We're not going to worry about that right now. But we're going to take our slime spider. And we're going to put in just an egg. And we'll give this just a minute. And it's going to basically, anything that has a spawn egg, it can do this with. Uh, so in the case of like, slime spiders you know they've got a spawn egg somewhere in here and so they'll be able to be crafted uh, through this so then all we have to do is just grab ourselves any kind of spawner we're going to take one of these uh, armored frost spirits and make a spawner with that and then we've got our box of eternal closure emptied out and ready to be used so um, i'm just going to put this spawner in I'm just going to put this spawner in right here for now, just to speed up the spawning of it, because it might be kind of slow right now. And maybe whip up a few clocks as well. And hopefully these don't have any kind of special spawn condition. They may have to, they may only be able to spawn in like a given dimension if the way they're set up is kind of weird, or a given biome. So I may actually have to take the spawner over to the slime forest to do it. Because it seems like it's stuck there. I mean, this place is dark. Yeah, let me grab it. Let me just warp on back. And we'll just set this up. Oh, we've actually got a Roka. Probably back in here. We still have to find a Magician, too. Check the trees, too, because sometimes these bosses spawn in the trees. Oh, I lost him. Okay, well, that's fine. Let me pop down right here. Okay, yeah, it seems like it is uh, biome-specific. Uh, now, we could bypass that, of course, if we wanted to with a uh, dragon egg, I imagine, because uh, then it would just ignore the spawn requirements. But this is going to be a lot easier method for us to get our slime. And technically, we could probably, if we had the potion up, we could probably just AFK and let them kill themselves on our armor reflection. Uh, so, once we get the stuff set up for easier dragon eggs which we're actually not too far off from probably doing that um, but once we have those coming in then we'll probably end up upgrading these uh, some of these like weird spawners that we won't really need all the time uh, we may end up upgrading those with dragon eggs just so that we can make use of them especially the spawners for the abyss mod because i bet you most of these are going to be uh they're going to end up being biome specific. But the unstable slime, the slime fusion, we're going to need it for the Incarith uh, fusion. Pretty much any kind of fusion. Uh, yeah, this is actually something that we're going to use a lot of uh, for some of these fused armors, which we will probably end up talking about those a little bit later. It looks like it's only used for the Regen Somnium upgrade, but since it is used for armor fusion... Uh, I'll end up wanting a bit of that. So this this will probably end up being a spawner that we have set up long term. Just because armor fusion is kind of a big thing. Uh, it's not something we'll probably get into today. Uh, but it is something that we'll probably get into a bit later on. And end up wanting uh, for a bit of stuff. So I probably won't farm more than enough to make one regen potion today. But uh, that is something that we'll probably push on. Since the mobs for this dimension probably... We'll end up needing dragon eggs for their spawners to work for us. Uh, we will probably end up prioritizing that and pushing on to that before too long. 
All right, so there's three stable slime. As you can see, it's going to take just a little bit. Okay, we should have enough uh, slime now. We actually just got a slime spider spawn egg. So, just dropped. Uh, so, it would have taken us a lot of kills, though, uh, to get up to that. We should have enough of these, but we're definitely not going to be making any more until we can uh, get those automated because they're a little bit painful to make, uh, even with a spawner. Uh, that's going to make us two slime fusions. Uh, that's pretty much the case with all of these upgrades. They're all pretty expensive. You know, we're once we get a Roka spawner, an Elder spawner, a Crystal Golem spawner, a Bis Creeper, probably not, because those are actually really, really common, and I don't think it's something that we're really going to need. But uh, we use a lot of Roka horns in here, and I don't feel like it's something that I want to go out and have to farm that many times. Uh, so we're going to be making spawners for all the different boss mobs and stuff for uh, a BS. Uh, and we don't have to leave them running all the time. We're, you know, the way we're going to be setting it up is so that it can be toggled on and off. But just to make our lives a bit easier, we do have five Roka horns. About to go down to three, but uh, we do have quite a few of them. Uh, we're also going to need two bo or one bottle of Somnium and a Phantom Essence, which we can make with Phantom Souls. We actually have just enough phantom souls uh oh i'm missing the the titan bones let me get that real quick uh we've only got two titan bones okay so we're gonna have to go out and get some titan bones uh and also more phantom uh actually more phantom uh essence too because i'm gonna make two of these uh titan bones are fairly easy and phantoms also uh there is oh there's an elder okay let me uh I'm gonna go ahead and capture. I need to. I need to upgrade this so that it's unbreakable. Try not to capture that one guy. Okay, there we go. Do I need to get that unbreakable like soon? Uh, but okay, so we got a box with an elder in it. So we did capture ourselves an elder. That's great. So we don't have to worry about the Elder Eyes uh, moving forward. Oh, there's a uh, Locust. Big Dodo Bird. I think it's the first time we've ran into it uh, in the episode. And of course, for Phantoms, we're going to need to come to a Phantom Crate biome. Uh, so, there we go. Uh, to get our Phantom Essences. So I'm going to grab these really, really quick. Uh, and then Titan Bones. We can just grab... Bone blocks uh, to get those titan bones uh, so we'll be getting these inside of the phantom crate biome so we can grab these while we're farming phantoms i know i'm gonna need at least one more there we go uh, we'll get one phantom essence and two phantom essence there we go <clears throat> okay so at this point we can warp on home and we can craft up our two Regen Somnium upgrades. Now, of course, we're going to want two more of these. But I'm not going to farm Abyss Slime Spiders for right now. Uh, but right now, we're sitting on five Somnium. If we pop the us, uh, what this is going to do is this is going to give us kind of really, really slow Somnium Regen. We just got a half a bar. Uh, do it again, and we get basically double the speed. Uh, we can pop a maximum, though, of two more of those. 20% uh, is max, uh, but then like say the cooldown ring or the cooldown upgrade we can do uh, Five of those we can do five of the damage uh, And then we can do five of the usage uh, But that way we do just kind of passively regen that somnium We don't have to keep making somnium potions now what we're gonna do. Let's pop down There's a couple of the things that we do need to cover first up the research table Let's go ahead and get one of these and we're going to plop this down. we got an, yet another table here. Uh, right here is fine. And to go with that, we're going to want to get a crystal cutter. Uh, this is another workstation. This one does crystals. Um, like, for example, and I think we're going to have to research these before we can even do many of them. Uh, but for example, let's take our Loran energy and let's put in, like, 
say abyss crystal crimson crystal that kind of stuff drop it into there yeah it looks like it just gets consumed i think we're gonna have to research first uh, so let's put in our crimson crystal hit research uh, you research the crimson crystal this crystal consists of 50 percent lava 20 percent air and 30 percent obsidian it can be used for rings that need the energy of fire uh, you can now process this crystal in a crystal cutter um, yeah we can't actually do anything with that but if we put this into here now we can make crimson crystal shards uh, and then these can be used to make like the ring of fire strike uh, the ring of fire storm uh, crimson powder which is also used to make the ring of fire uh, that's how we get those now the abyss crystals drop one of those in there and of course it's taking five xp levels uh, you research the abyss crystal this crystal consists of 60 percent souls 20 percent organs and 20 percent loran energy can be used for rings that need the energy of souls and you can process it now in the crystal cutter uh, so if you want to do any processing through the crystal cutter to get uh, these various different shards you are going to need to research them first but as you can see it doesn't consume it just uses a little bit of energy um, but you can see there's uh, caverna there's rl there's ender crimson frost warped abyss hollow uh, but then we can start cutting all of these down uh, into their respective crystals so uh, that's the purpose of the crystal cutter and the research table I missed one. Bing. And of course it does use Loran energy, but once again, indestructible Loran means you have infinite energy. Uh, now a couple things that I would like to test out, like if we were to teleport into the radio dimension and we hung out here for a little bit, do we get teleported out in this case? Or is it only from clicking on the radio? Because if it's only from clicking on the radio, then we can rebuild our Gaia arena here and all will be right with the world. But if it teleports us out on just a timer for us being in here, and that's a little bit more problematic for us. And the pocket dimension may be uh, in this same dimension. The ash dimension, like the end of the end of time kind of dimension, um, which you guys didn't see that in the last one because it was the other ending. Um, like if we had chosen to kill Nosage then we would have got the ash world but i don't know if the the pocket dimension is that world or if it's this one we might pop into the test world here in just a little bit and just find out yeah it seems like it's not teleporting us out i think it's the radio that gives us that uh, kind of that cooldown or that timer uh, that teleports us out because it seems like if we come in by waystone it seems like we can just spend as long as we want to in this dimension which is perfect that's what i was hoping would be the case so we'll be able to set up our Gaia arena in this dimension again all right so over into a test world in the pocket dimension if we break through this ooh, it's not the gray world it's basically uh it's basically the the same dimension as the radio dimension except there is not any like green particles so it's a pitch dark completely pitch dark dimension i think i like the green particles though personally uh so i think we're going to stick with the other one uh, but we could probably get through the walls uh, if we wanted to because it's literally just a box we might end up setting something outside of it since it, it's literally just a box it should be pretty easy to get out of uh, if i come up with something that i would like to do outside of the box but we'll see we'll see um because i like the other dimension for the gaia arena i think with the green particles uh see there used to be in in abyss before if you did the other ending where you killed massage you got a world that was literally just gray uh, and it had like these ashy looking trees and kind of ash particles in the sky it kind of looked like red mountain had exploded or something but it seems like that dimension has been totally removed and so there's just pure black and then pure black with particles all right while i was in my test world i did test out the ring of flight and i will say that it's not it's not terribly great uh, and the reason being is even fully upgraded with regen and with the cost reducer um, the usage somnium upgrade uh, you can still only fly for about four seconds uh, you know with max som with filled up somnium so it's not it's not terribly useful for us 
you know, maybe in vanilla, it would, you know, it would, it would see some use, I think, but, um, let's see, oh, wow, that's region three, and every time we pop that, that's five seconds of region three, that's actually pretty good, I mean, to be fair, we have spells that apply it, but I was kind of curious about that one, um, and we've got ring of fire, and ring of invisibility, if we wanted to be more invisible than we already are to everything, uh, there's that. And then this one would just burn uh, all nearby en entities. But uh, eh. we can always put Unbreakable on those two. But uh, but anyways, I think what we're going to do, there's, there's a few rings that I would like to make. However, in order to make those, uh, we are going to have to go back into the Abyss and we're going to have to find some crystals. Uh, now, I did start setting up the us. I spent a few minutes. Uh, the radio, we can actually bring that over with the Bag of Yearning. I tested that. Um, if you break it, well, like with Silk Touch or something like that, you're not going to get it, but Bag of Yarding can bring it over. Uh, so I brought our radio over because we don't really need it anymore. This is stuff I'm going to be using um, here fairly soon. So I just set it on the shelf because it was in my, in my inventory and I didn't want to dump it back into the system. But uh, but yeah, I did start setting up a room. It's not done, but uh, getting all of our abyss stuff into kind of a centralized location. So... Uh, anyways, let's head down. We're going to head back into the abyss and we need to set out in search of just specifically just crystals uh, because as it stands right now, uh, the only crystals that we do have are uh, crimson and abyss and we really need to find uh, ender, frost, warped, hollow, uh, you know, all of that different stuff. And ideally, a bit of them. Uh, oh, and also Caverna as well. So let's find ourselves a nice underground area. And let's see if we can uh, come across some Caverna crystals. Oh, actually, right here. Oh, but it's giving us, uh, it's giving us crimson. Why is that? Hmm. I actually think that's probably a bug. Uh, which does mean that it's probably going to disallow crafting the majority of the crystals. Uh, if we're not able to get hollow or ender or anything like that. Because um, <clears throat> the ring that I had in mind, I was actually wanting to make the, the ring of time. Uh, but to do that, we are going to need a Ring of Freeze. We're also going to need some Hollow Powder, which requires Hollow Crystal Shards. Inkerith, which we've got. That's not a problem. Uh, and then the Ring of Freeze requires uh, Caverna Powder. So, and Frost Crystal Shards. But uh, if we're unable to get Caverna Crystals... then that means we're not going to be able to research them and we're not going to be able to get the shards. Which is a little bit problematic. But yeah, due to that, it means that the the rings may not really be craftable at the moment. Uh, unfortunately. So. Oh, we got a Night Hunter. Bada boom. Oh, there we go. There is a Crystal Golem. I'm going to go ahead and grab... Huh. Oh, I grabbed a duplicate. And another duplicate. Okay, it looks like I can't grab the crystal golem in a soul gem. Yeah, come back up here. I want you kind of close to the box if I can. There we go. Get in my box. Boom. Okay. Uh, so we did get a crystal golem in a box. Every once in a while I'll see a magician, but I can never find him. Okay, it's been just a little bit. I've been kind of doing some building and then popping over to the test world and testing a few things. And I'll pop back over and do a little bit more building uh, and going out to the abyss and, and gathering some things. Uh, you can move node crystals with the bag of yarding. Uh, so that is an option. And uh, it should work for the uh, Caverna Crystals and stuff. I'm planning on moving some of those over uh, into this room as well. 
but I did do a bit of testing. It does seem like, aside from just the crystals that we've obtained, you can't really obtain any other crystals at the moment. Because if you break, like, for example, if you break Caverna, it gives you uh, Crimson. If you break Ender Crystals, it gives you uh, the Abyss, if I recall. Um, it seems like the drops on the crystals are really messed up and all you can get is like Crimson and Abyss. Uh, so it does seem like that's a bug at the moment, which is kind of to be expected. I mean, this update was actually pretty big for the mod, so, uh, you know, it happens. So, uh, but maybe on, maybe on down the road, we can uh, make some of these rings because I was actually wanting to make a few of the rings today. Also, there's a couple rings that don't have crafting recipes at the moment, like Ring of Ghosts. I would love to get this ring, but... Uh, it's not obtainable uh, because basically it allows you to go to spectator mode for like 30 seconds. Uh, so it would be really great for like, for example, finding dragon caves later on uh, for like tier four and tier five. Uh, I was also wanting to make like the ring of eagle uh, because that's another option for finding dragons down the road. However, it does require that we get in ender crystal shards, which can't be obtained at the moment. Uh, so there's a little bit within the mod that uh, we can't currently reach. The damage rings are not that great. See, the problem with, with spells, and this is true in this case kind of with ours, I'm, it's starting to kind of fall off after we really kind of re-enchanted these two. But the generally a lot of the times the problem with damage type spells in modded uh, is a lot of times they're gauged for more of like a vanilla style. In certain packs, like in this pack, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't transfer very well. Um, you know, we're using the Crude Scythe, which is actually a debuff and damage to what we could be running if we were running, like, the ATM weapons. Uh, and even this is substantially stronger than the spells that, you know, uh, that are available. And it's it's a hard thing to fix because if you scale spell damage too high, then it becomes, like, what you rush to if it's not gated really heavily, you know. Uh, so I totally understand that. But uh, the reason I bring that up is because... I love the idea of the Somnium upgrades, like the damage, because, you know, it's like a permanent buff. Uh, and if there was a way to do that for, like, say, R's spell damage, where there's something that you could craft, and maybe it took a lot of resources, or it progressively got more expensive, uh, to increase damage by 10%, like, permanently, that would be a great way uh, to scale damage. I don't know how realistic that would be, but it's a cool, uh, it's a cool concept. I actually really like uh, these upgrades, like these permanent buffs. And it's a cool take on magic. Like I said, the damage on the rings here, it's not going to scale all that well uh, for this pack, you know, with the boss mobs and, and we'll be taking on dragons and stuff before too long. But in, in a more vanilla type setting, uh, it would be quite nice. Uh, but of course, a lot of these are not obtainable because I thought about, well, we'll make black magic. That sounds cool, right? But uh, it requires ender crystal shards. So a lot of the, the rings are not going to be obtainable uh, only having access to a couple different types of crystals, which is a little unfortunate. But I did want to pop down here. I was doing a little bit of mining, and I wanted to show you there is a couple biome-specific ores. I can't remember what all biomes they can spawn in. Uh, I do know that both of them spawn in the slime forest, uh, but the others are like blue jungle and blue forest. I think there's one in each. And I think one spawns in the mountains, but I can't remember. But we, you know, we hadn't come across them as of yet, and that's fusion ore. Uh, for one, and there is going to be an advancement for that. Uh, you know, we obtained fusion ore the last time around in the abyss. And then there's also the garnite ore. Uh, both of these do have advancements. Uh, by the way, it should be noted that silk touch does not work on abyss resources, at least at the moment. Uh, but we might, yeah, we can bag of yarding them if we want to use them for decoration. I think bag of yarding within this mod is probably... Uh, it's probably your best friend because if you want to decorate with a lot of the different plants and things like that, uh, it will require the bag of yurting pretty much. Oh, we have lizards from the abyss. Uh, but one thing I would like to add, see, do we have a true middle? I don't think so. Uh, cause up here I'm adding the ignited brickstone pillars. I'm going to get some more, uh, souls, but... Let's go ahead and make ourselves a healing campfire uh, using our old regen ring. And we're going to put this in. I may end up having to make two. Can I make regen rings at the moment? Uh, no, because we need RL crystal shards. 
Okay, so I've only got the one, and that's just because we had the ring left over from the last go around with the Abyss. Because uh, that was one of the things that did stay. Now, let's just put it in here, I suppose. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's basically going to keep the uh, the regen effect. It's a little bit weaker, it's regen 2. Uh, but that's going to give us regen 2 in a fairly large radius. You can see, uh, if we come out here, it does drop off. Uh, seven block radius that we can get regen to just when we pass by here. It's not something that I actually need, like I said, because if I take any damage, it tends to apply uh, a big regen, but we're going to include it into there. Uh, there is one more, but this one does. Uh, the shield campfire burns uh, enemies nearby. And that's one. We do have one shot at that. I don't think I can make any more. Uh, yeah, we can because it just takes the crimson powder. So we can actually make these so we can have all the shield campfires that we want. Uh, and it might be something that we use. It would actually be a very good thing. I haven't tested to see if it works on passives. And if so, that would be a good way to uh, like basically just cook cows uh, or other things. Not that we actually need it, but uh, maybe if we need it for a recipe. Because I think we're going to be switching up our food again here pretty soon. Because we've been eating honey glazed ham for a bit. Uh, now the last thing that I would like to do is going to take me probably just a little bit of time. Um, I actually need to remove this. I'll, I'll remove that here soon, but uh, we're going to pop into the abyss. I've got to do a little bit of flying around. Uh, I do still need to grab a Broca in a box. Not a big rush, because uh, it's going to be just a little bit before we actually start setting up spawners. Especially now knowing that the rings, most of the rings aren't obtainable, at least until an update uh, that fixes that. Now, that being said, I'm not for sure if it's pack specific or if it's just the mod uh that's having the issue, you know, I can't, I'm, I don't know for sure on that. Oh, we have an elder here. I'm going to kill him just because he's here. But uh, it's actually less of a rush for the spawners because the reason we wanted the spawners is because of uh, the rings specifically. And due to the fact that uh, the majority of the rings that are good are not obtainable at present due to the crystal issue, uh, it's actually not a super big rush for us to get those spawners in place. So we do have some passive Somnium regeneration if we do want to try anything, uh, which is nice. There's this structure here, and I haven't found any purpose for it because you'll notice that the chests, they, they do spawn empty. I think this is probably intended for something later, uh, maybe a boss fight or uh, maybe to get something, you know. Uh, but it's this big structure covered in the ignited pillars. Uh, a lot of empty towers and uh, a whole like underground section too. Like if you pop down here, uh, you can actually head down, yeah, into this area here, which actually I guess is intended to be the main entrance. Uh, you know, assuming that you're not flying everywhere. That's one of the dodo birds sticking its head through. Um, but yeah, there's this big massive structure. Uh, no spawners or anything like that in here. I think it's it's uh, unfinished. Okay, as I was flying around, I came upon this, and I just wanted to show it to you guys. Like, it's kind of cool the way that this generated. It would make a really good spot to uh, maybe build something. It's in this big, big blue mountain uh, biome. So, really cool mountainous terrain up here. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. It's got, uh, there's some neat... Some neat generation to be sure. This is also a really good dimension I've noticed for hunting uh, apotheosis bosses. All right, but at this point, I know that it's about wrapping up point for this episode and we've covered about all that we're gonna be able to cover uh, at present within the abyss. Uh, but like I said, there is still some stuff that I think isn't implemented. Uh, and of course we have the bug with the crystals, so we can't take full advantage of those rings just yet, but hopefully uh, hopefully that is something that we'll see an update. I liked it before in the old version, but I like it more so uh, in this version. I think it's headed to a good spot. Uh, still a little rough around the edges, but it, you know it's it's a whole lot better uh, than it was. So, uh, and at least we can craft stone bricks now. I think that's a huge upgrade. Now, one thing that I did not look to see, just to double check here. Can I make the crack? See, I still can't make the crack, so we're still going to have to mine those. Because uh, I like to use a mix of those for the Gaia Arena. 
Uh, also, the Night Altar, I'm imagining that I can probably move that with Bag of Yarding. They're fairly common, and I would like to actually decorate with these things. Anyways, like I said, it is wrapping up point for this episode. We came, we saw, we conquered. So we're going to end this one out here. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys enjoyed going back to the Abyss mod. Like I said, I think it, I think it definitely necessitated another video or two, because uh, so much has drastically changed at this point. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I hope to see you guys next time.